So this is Ray Nunez, uh, pad split, Florida uh, account executive. Senior national senior, account executive. Senior national account executive. Sorry, I didn't mean to mess that title up. So I'm walking him through a property today that was previously an Airbnb. And what I'm thinking, a lot of traffic that you guys are gonna start seeing driving through uh, pad split is people who had an Airbnb and A, the market is saturated, they're not getting any returns, or B, they have now got busted through code enforcement like myself, and now they have to look at another exit strategy, whether it's long-term rental, sell the property, or go through pad split. So I'm, I'm here today with him to take him through the property to see what his vision is for my property. This side's a four bedroom, one bath. I have another uh, a side, which is a one one. This is a duplex property. And then through that door right there is about a 20 by 25, two car garage slash workshop. So he's gonna walk through, kind of give me some tips, what he thinks, what's his vision, and maybe where I can put up walls to maximize the space. I would surprise you a lot by telling you that you can keep a pad split mm -hmm. uh, the same as an Airbnb. Okay. So like, for example, you already have the furniture required for a pad split. Right. Uh, you have your nightstand, you have your full size bed at minimum, Perfect. and you have some storage space. Cool. So for this room, the transition is very easy for you to go ahead and make this into a pad split room. Yeah. The only difference is, is we're gonna probably end up putting a number on the door, cool. yep. Wi-Fi lock or combination lock, and you already have your air vent that allows there to be obviously ventilation yeah. um, in the room, but everything else is fairly standard. Now real quick, Ray, for the rooms, now something I read about on you guys' uh, uh, terms and conditions, I don't have to supply the linens, right? You is don't. that right? Yeah, that's correct. Do most people supply linens or no? So most people don't, but what I would recommend with linens is you're going to photograph this as an Airbnb the same way. Right. You're going to highlight this property the way you would an Airbnb. Right. People shop with their eyes. Yeah. And so I would photograph it and then remove the linens. All you have to leave on the bed would be the mattress Correct. covers. And I actually already have the professional pictures because this was a previous Airbnb. So I'm ahead of the game. Cheat code. So another thing I would uh, suggest for people who don't aren't used to high traffic and high volume in their bedrooms are make sure you put some mattress protectors on the beds because that way the guests don't ruin the beds. Now let's say a guest does ruin a bed. Mm -hmm. Do they, am I able to charge them a fee for ruining the bed? Let's say they took the mattress cover off, uh, they moved out of the property and all of a sudden there's pee stains everywhere, which probably can happen. I first recommend to go ahead and get colored mattress covers. And almost most people don't know that that exists. There's mm -hmm. black ones, gray ones, but yep. let's say that it does damage the bed now. Gotcha. There is move-in fees that people do charge. I saw that. Hosts do charge and it's non-refundable. It's not a deposit because these people aren't tenants and they're not signing the leases. Yeah. And so since they're not tenants, they have to sign something and that is a, uh, that is a, that, that's moving fee basically. And you can set that to be any price, $100, $150, $200, $50. You can even mark it as zero as part of marketing. But if you do leave a fee, it's non-refundable. You get that money back for the repairs. Gotcha. If it's greater than that, then you can file a claim through pad split and then pad split will go ahead and put that under collections cool. under the person's name. Cool. Okay. Kind of like, kind of like what Airbnb does. You put, you can put a claim through. That's awesome. All right. And we report positively and negatively. So okay. if people pay their rent on time or yes. if people pay their fee on time, then it increases their credit. Yes. And if they pay late, it decreases their credit. So they get, so when I have a, a potential member, which you guys call them, you guys call them members, members right? Members, yep. So uh, pad split becomes my tenant. Right, they signed a lease agreement with me, and then they have members of their community who rent these bedrooms. Now, um, when when they uh, come in, those members, uh, they come in, they have a, a score, right? They have they get a score with you guys. Yeah, they, there's so a grading like, system. They what? There's a grading system. There's a grading system, so I know if this person's reputable to stay in the bedroom. That's correct, right? and that's you can awesome. flunk out. So technically, if you get a bad grade, there's a certain number where you'll fall out of the system itself and okay. terminated. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So with this particular room, there's no doors on the, on the, yeah, there's no doors. Okay. Uh, but with that being said, uh, I know it's key for Airbnb. You do need to enclose this uh, okay. for this to be a room. Yeah. Easy. I would suggest a dresser for this particular room. You could probably do a shell of a closet versus, uh, something that's enclosed and it would help with visibility and space. So you could just get something on Amazon for $50. That yeah. Helps you shoot. Enclose. I'll throw it in the corner. Yep. And then some two, uh, some two by fours make a 36 o opening and, and a door here. So guys, enclosing this right here and making this a door, you know, probably cost me six, $700, you know, from ha having somebody do it, you know, not even a day's worth of, of labor, you know, probably three, four hours paint studs. And now I have a whole closing in bedroom with a, for a pad split. So I hate to burst your bubble okay. on, I know we create rooms, pad splits, a creative room everywhere in here. We cannot create a room. 
And the reason why we can't create a room is that there's not another egress to get out. Gotcha. And okay. so you can't go through a room to get into another room. Gotcha. Yep. And if, even if you did, let's say that you put a wall over here where the TV is and you somehow made this into a bedroom, mm -hmm. there is no window yep. or way to get out they of here. You have to jump out, right. By code. Correct. Yep. Cool. Yep. For a fire, somebody has to jump out. Boom. Okay. No worries. So this would be just a flex space, right? This would be a common area. You know, there's a lot of people playing around with the idea of some living rooms. I wouldn't say do couches. What I would because say is put computer desk. Computer desk, gotcha. And so that you have now a workstation for people gotcha. that work from home, especially since you don't have room for desk inside the bedrooms. Now you have a common area. Cool, the TV's there, it's subscription. They can go ahead and sign up themselves, but they have desks that they can work from as Got opposed it. to having an area that they can invite a friend So from. it's just another amenity that we're able to showcase on pad split that makes it more enticing for somebody to book or wanna you know, be a tenant or, you know, within, within the property. Okay, so getting rid of the couch, putting desks there, that's easy, no problem. But everything else is fantastic. They, some hosts do provide amenities like yeah, coffee machines. Yeah, I was gonna machines. ask you that. Uh, it's not standard, it's not forced, we're not telling you to go ahead and do so, uh, okay. but the most livable that you make the property, the more they'll stay in the property longer, and the more happy, and then, I mean, you'd want to have someone in your property for a year or two. Yeah, so what do you see across the board? Like, so for instance, being that this was a short-term rental property, and I have all the amenities in which I would keep them there for their benefit, are you seeing pad split hosts going out there and taking and f furnishing the, the, the kitchen to kind of make it more, you know, you know, appealing to the, to the. I've seen, yeah, in the yeah. last like half okay. a year, year, there's hosts that are making it look nicer. We have luxury pad splits. Gotcha. I own a luxury pad split. Uh, if, and with the luxury pad splits, it's not so much so that they are making it very high end is that they're buying in a better area and with a better area you're getting a different type of member gotcha different type of member you provide different type of furniture what's considered a luxury pad split a million dollar home uh no not at all but i would say the amenities like you're not going to go ahead and do higher end furniture you're not going to go ahead and decorate it and leave the decoration inside the house so instead of just this looks like staging to me yeah but this is staying inside the house right and so this is more frills versus basic just standards and there are standard homes. There are cool. um, larger operators that are buying pad splits and just put in metal frame beds. Gotcha. And aren't doing too much to the house. All they're doing is adding a lot of rooms. Right. But the way the time of that has been changing to where now people are taking their Airbnb experience mm -hmm. and making better pad splits. Gotcha. And I feel like besides just putting a metal frame in the rooms, which all my beds do have a metal frame under them because obviously people jump on up and down sure. on beds, but like you said, it makes the person feel more at home. It makes mm -hmm. them feel more invited. And really in the long run, that investor might think, oh, okay, well I can get away with putting, you know, $300 in furnishings per bedroom and save another two, three hundred dollars versus buying a bed frame and maybe an accent chair. Mm -hmm. But they're not realizing that you got to think about retention and the turnover rate. Do you want high turnover or do you want it to continue to save money? Like I rather have members in here who are living here and happy and we don't have to worry about a, a constant turnover and it's constant money for you guys, pad split, and it's okay. constant money for me. So I'd rather spend that a couple extra bucks, me, me personally. Yeah, definitely. And <clears throat> so when we come up with pricing really fast, and I don't, I don't want to dive into pricing too hard, but- Oh, dude, say whatever you want, bro. Location does determine the spectrum of price. Mm -hmm. And then amenities and room size and features then determine what the price is for that room. Gotcha. And so being that we're in College Park or near College Park, Fairbanks College Park. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. does open it up to where now we're near more corporate centers. We're in a hot spot that there's what townhouses, uh, condos and apartments yep. that are eighteen hundred dollars or more. Yep. So that's what your competition is. So if that's right. what your competitor is, then you have a higher spectrum of being able to charge more. And so that's what I mean by now this room, instead of being the average of two oh five a week might look like 250 a week, mm -hmm. might look like 260 a week with a private wow. ensuite being now 300 to 350. Gotcha. Versus it being 260. Love it, so. love it. Okay, awesome. What else do we have got? You, have you seen, any, have you been here yet? We don't do yeah. double beds. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh man, I gotta take and a bed out. We don't do double beds. Are you tell me I can't charge double for this room? We're not, with the, so where we're at with the platform is that we're not, we're screening everyone. We're doing background check, credit check, work verification. And yeah. because we can only, there's already like a weirdness on people saying, hey dude, is it guys and girls? Yes. Is it co-living? 
is it just girls? Can I just yeah. get girls? Yeah. Well, then now imagine talking to those investors and saying, hey, we're putting them in bedrooms too. Yeah. And they don't know each other. Yeah. So because of that, we haven't quite developed something to go ahead and include, for example, couples. Mm -hmm. There are some hosts that do so, but there's like, it, it's, it's a lot of, um, they're letting it happen. So like example, if someone wants to do a couple mm -hmm. uh, right now for it to work, you have to have two people sign up to two different rooms. Gotcha. And they have to be vetted. Gotcha. And then they can stay in the same room technically because it doesn't matter. Everyone knows who they are. So really quick, so people understand, what does the vetting process look like? Are they just filling an application and getting a background check or a credit score? What, what's, what does that look like? So after they find PadSplit through marketing or wherever they found it, they go on the website, they pay a fee. That fee is for the screening. The screening is the background check, credit check, work verification. Gotcha. The background check is to figure out criminal background. Got it. The credit check is to figure out evictions. Okay. And the work verification is to figure out how much you can afford. Got it. Because then, based off of what you can afford, you won't see stuff you can't afford on the platform. Mm -hmm. So as opposed to just opening it up for you and showing you a property in Winter Park, if mm -hmm. you can only afford Oak Ridge, right. you don't see Winter Park. Right. Oh, as the as the uh, uh, member, you won't see it. Cool. You won't so see you guys it. are only putting properties in front of them. So let me ask you this. A traditional landlord will look at 3x of their income for them to qualify for a typical rental. Are you guys looking 3x? The uh, algorithm as... is less than three. I'd okay. say it's somewhere between two and two and a half. Gotcha. Um, but you do get to see it before you pre-approve them. And there's settings for that. Mm -hmm. So you can have auto-approve, instant booking, Got equivalent. It. Or you could see their information and say, I like this person based off their income, based off of the information that's provided. Yep. I'm going to yes them or no them. Got it. Got it. Um, and are you seeing houses are, are is the member able to see like who's living in the house before they book yep or, or you know the members now from their point of view they see who's in the house gotcha and they there's some characteristics of them in there so introvert night owl love it and so they can say hey there's two boys two girls i'm a girl perfect or hey there's all girls perfect or or it's a mix perfect or there's all guys yeah. I don't care. Mm -hmm. As same thing though, when someone's moving in, the members inside the house can go ahead and see the person moving in. Mm -hmm. So that in case someone's cheating the system and they did, let's say that I, I did the background check, but you're moving in. Mm -hmm. You don't look like me. Right, right, right. So when you move into that pad oh, split room it. and the members go, this isn't right. Yeah. They'll call pad split. Right. Got it. Got it. So they're tattletelling on each Correct, other. Correct. <laughs> and that's how it works at the end of the day. Like, Hey, uh, Javier left hair in the sink. Yeah. In, I mean, in the bathtub. I'm calling pad split because rules are in the house that you have to leave common areas clean. Yeah. But what's the definition of clean? You just mentioned a piece of hair on the ground or in the, in the sink. What's the, on pad split terms. Oh, that, changes, that changes per members. Uh, yeah. That changes per members at the end of the day. Pad split, I don't think, has a definition. It's just leaving it the way it was when you got there. Gotcha. I believe. Gotcha. Uh, but as an investor, I do send cleaning crews to my house twice a month. And, and that, okay, so you're And they clean them. common areas. Got it. So they only can clean common areas. Yep. And what are your, what would you say on a, on a, your properties are probably five, six, seven, and eight bedroom properties, right? You would say? Yeah, five to eight. So what do they, what do your cleaners charge you? I use property management for my pad split. So my property manager includes really? that. Really? Yep. So what are you paying for property? So pad split charges a fee, and then you're also paying another fee to a property manager? 100%, because so the it's, income is there. Gotcha, And okay. since the income is there, gotcha. it's plentiful. Right. Uh, I don't mind having an extra buffer in Got between, because what pad split does manage is, they'll manage the people, the screening, the collection of money, the marketing, and the interpersonal disputes. And so the one thing that they don't cover is a physical asset. And so if the AC goes bad because you know, I half did the work or let's say the refrigerator, mm -hmm. I bought a used refrigerator right? and it dies out. It's not pad splits thing. It's not Airbnb's thing. Right. So pad split will then contact the homeowner directly or the person you designate mm -hmm. property management. And Got so it. I don't want to get the ticket order. Right. Phone call at 12 yeah. o'clock. Hey, uh, my fridge ain't working. Yeah. Property management does that. Now pad split does, uh, build out a vendor network list of vendors that right, understand pad property managers is one of them. And since pad splits doing 90% of the work anyway, right. prop those property managers do it at a cheaper cost. Yeah. I was just going to ask you that. Would. So your typical long-term rental would be eight to 10%. What does a pad split manager look like? You're looking at six to 8% or a flat fee. Okay. Gotcha. Okay.
I like that. So there's already infrastructure built around pad split for pad split management. It's kind of like, you know, Airbnb, you have co-hosting and you have management companies that will take, you know, a, a portion of the uh, gross income. Yeah, the property managers just charge me a flat fee based off of the size of the house. So if a five bedroom would be charged different than an eight bedroom. Got so it. a five bedroom might cost 250 while a, a eight wow, bedroom would cheap. be three, 350. Wow, that's real cheap. And for you to be pretty much 100% passive, 100% passive, you know, passive. semi-passive to 100% passive, that's huge. 100%. So for a bedroom like this, what would you say? This is a large bedroom, right? Now, obviously I can throw like a private desk in here to make it a little bit more appealing, maybe get rid of this vanity. I don't know if this would be, you know, a good amenity for somebody, but. It's cute, but it's not gonna make you extra money exactly. on pad split. So somebody probably pay more for this room if they're like, you know what? The common area has uh, desks and mm -hmm. that's great and all, but then I have to be out there. It might be a little noisy with other members of, uh, of pad split. Versus in my bedroom, I can have 100% study time, just me, one-on-one, -on -one, not have to worry. So do you think this bedroom, being that the size, and if I was to add a desk, right? Obviously, I can't just throw a wall up because obviously pad split, the biggest thing about it is taking a property, putting walls up where you have, you know, egress windows and people can get in and out of by code. You know, I can't do that here because I only have one window. So how do I maximize the potential of a room this size? I love the question and I love to game the system. So the way you game the system is before acquisitions, let's say that you're in the process of acquiring the property or you're looking which room makes me more money or even pricing. Right. Well, we have, uh, we have a tool on the, on the platform. So as you're onboarding your property, it's gonna ask you what size is your room? Mm -hmm. Is it small, medium, large? Gotcha. Is the bed size full? Uh, queen or king got it. It's gonna also ask what are your additional amenities? What type of closet do you have? Is it mm -hmm. dresser reach-in closet walk-in closet and as you select some of those features It's gonna go ahead and increase the price got it or decrease the price potentially right. and so larger rooms like this Are on the higher spectrum of pricing reach-in closets like that or mm -hmm. walk-in closets also a higher spectrum That mm -hmm. might be an increase of nine dollars Right. The bedroom size would be an increase of $15. King size from full to king size would be an increase of about $15 to $20. Wow. And then wow, the, I love it. the walk in, I mean, the so, private ensuite bathroom, increase of $50 to $70. Wow. So I could potentially raise a room a hundred bucks almost. A hundred percent. You can go from a $200 standard rate in Orlando up to just off of amenities alone, somewhere closer to 300. Yeah. Wow. Wow, okay. And that's, that's not factoring in the neighborhood you're in because then 200, 205 is standard price. So that's still Richmond Heights. That's still, um, that's still Pine Hills, for example. We have room standard pricing that's 230. So if standard pricing here is 230, then it puts this price for this room with the best features at about 330, 340. Oh, 1200 to $1,300. Wow. So what do you think if, if I took this room, took out one of the beds, this is one bedroom, add, to, add a desk, you know, potentially just keep this in here, whatever, it looks pretty. What do you think a room like this would go for? Based off of comps. Location, all that stuff, because we're here in Winter Park, College Park, Century Located. I would do 230 for this room. 230? Yep. Okay. I would do 230. And I would say with the 230 times, you're looking at somewhere around $1,000 a month. $1,000 a month. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. And that's just furniture change Yeah. at that point. Like I said, I would just take one of these beds out, keep it as an additional one. I wouldn't even get rid of it. I would use it as a backup just in case, you know, a member ruined my, my bed and, you know, go from there. So this is another premium room. To me, it's a premium room because one, it's got, you know, extra space, couch, not a bunch of value add there. Just like he said, people want amenities that are useful. So a member might look at that couch and be like, this is not that friend. useful. Huh? Yeah. I'll bring a friend. I'll bring a friend. So what it seems like what pad split does is they try to eliminate people having hangouts. So that's why they don't like to do common areas like the living rooms because what happens? You start congregating into the living room and it gets congested. Other members are getting frustrated because of noise. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Since pad split works with the members exclusively, we mitigate as much as we can mitigate. Right. Makes sense. Taking that out. And so yeah, that would invite a friend. That's so like, would you, right? The OG of pad split. Would you? What would you do with that space? Like, ideally, don't get me wrong. Me and my, you know, experience. I would love to make this a bathroom. To be honest with you, it's a perfect size for a bathroom. That's like and 8, I can 000. charge. Uh, huh? It's like eight thousand. Yeah, but it's eight thousand dollar improvement. So I don't. I'm not gonna do that, right? Because that's just too much. It's too time consuming. I want to get this property up and going and making money. 
So it doesn't, the return on my investment on that, it's, it's gonna take too long for me to recoup my money. So I'm not gonna do that here. You with this couch, I could take this, put it in the garage, whatever, but what would you do with this space? I would still put a desk. So yes. some of the unique features that add more money in a bedroom that you wouldn't expect would be ceiling fan, weirdly enough, desk, chair, uh, mini fridge. Some people put TV in bedrooms. Got it. By adding TV in bedrooms, it's something that looks great in photos. And so as they're judging your pad split or they're looking for a pad split room mm -hmm. and they're scrolling through the map really mm -hmm. quick, your room would stick out with the TV and those extra amenities. Got it. And so I am more big on adding extra amenities. And especially since it's in a focal point, you're taking a photo from over there yep. and everything that falls over here, you're going to be able to see that mini fridge that costs you a hundred dollars at Costco. You're right. going to see the desk. Right. No, I'm okay with doing that type of stuff. Return on investment would be very fast and it's not, a, it's not an $8,000 uh, uh, a bathroom, but it's going to make it more appealing it goes a uh, long to way. people. And like you said, people, the pictures are what are selling the consumer, right? They're looking at the property, they're scrolling through, it's like Tinder, right? They're like, yep. holy shit, this is, looks good. Okay, I'm going to heart this one. Yep. Okay, boom, this is one of my top favorites. Yep. So whatever makes it more appealing. Now, would you say, and this is, I would consider a large bedroom, and that's one thing I like this about this home. So when I'm going through these bedrooms, I'm like, wow, these are freaking big. It's got potential. The heart of me wants to make them, you know, split. But like you said, I don't have the the windows here to do that. But uh, would you say two thirty range for this this bedroom too? It's, I think your flat out bottom price would be somewhere around two thirty. Two thirty. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Is that per bedroom or is that just these two? You would say these two so far. These two so far would be somewhere around two thirty. Two thirty. Got it. And then with the pricing, so people understand, you it's kind of like you know Airbnb gives me a suggested price for the market mm -hmm. and the type of property and their algorithm. You guys give a suggested price. And if you say, hey, my price is 230, am I able to go in there and say, you know what, I want 245 or I want 250. Hey, I'm not getting booking, so I can drop it to 220. And do you also give like a, a suggested time frame of how quick this turnaround would be on getting, like we're 100% empty today. There's no one living in here. If I was to put this on pads, but tomorrow, would you say, okay, 230 and probably take two and a half weeks, you know, based on your data that you guys are pulling in, mm -hmm. are you guys able to say it could take probably two weeks to fill this room or a week? Number is probably closer to seven days or less. Seven uh, days or less. Yeah. Wow. Seven days to first book in, I would say somewhere between two weeks to three weeks for 80% of occupancy. We are in seasonality technically, so I will say that that does factor in. Uh, we're more aligned with long-term rentals. And so when do people tend to move less? Mm -hmm. Around holidays. Yes. And so that does take a, that does factor in. Right, right. And it extends it a little bit, but no, we're seeing bookings within seven days. Wow. Wow. Okay. You can be overpriced technically. If I, if you decide to make this room 300, that's just something that you figure out and you go, okay, well I'm seven days in, I'm not meeting that standard. Mm -hmm. Let me go price reduce down ten dollars. Yeah, and I, I generally recommend knowing what your cheapest price possible to make a profit. Mm -hmm. What is the recommended price, and then price a little bit higher than that. Yep. And then work your way backwards as then you become more of a promotional item on the platform. As you reduce ten dollars, we advertise you even more. Yeah, going to advertisement. Let me touch on there. When I put this property up. Being that we're in College Park or Winter Park, now Pad Split obviously looks like you guys' main focal point are major cities, right? Mm -hmm. Where there's a lot of traffic. You guys are only driving ads for those particular areas. Let's say I wanted to go to Winter Haven, Florida, which is 45 minutes from here. You guys aren't driving ads there, right? So you guys are only focused on major cities, right? We are. Florida's weird. Florida's weird. So I grew Florida out from the from start. Yeah, the OG. Yeah, I was first rep. Open Jacksonville, launched Jacksonville, we're over 800 units. I launched Tampa, we're now over 800 units. I launched Orlando, we're at somewhere around 300 something units. Miami, wow. I launched Miami and it's still not at 100 yet, but we just launched Miami. Wow. Uh, but with that being said, because those are major cities and they overlap, places like Winter Haven overlap between Orlando and Tampa and we pay for a DMA market space. Mm -hmm. And so it's ranges. It says, oh, when you buy advertisement for Orlando, it it does Mount Dora to Winter Haven, all the way down to gotcha. Davenport, for Got example. It. And then Tampa does Sarasota up to wherever. And then we look at what that overlap is. Right. And so that in between, Polk County does. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, cool. Because I have seen you guys' ads and I was just figuring like if it's just honed in on that one market that you guys are that you guys are looking If you for. look at Atlanta, it's Atlanta and surrounding areas like Alpharetta, mm -hmm. Buford, Dodge yeah. Park. But when it gets to Savannah, we're not there. Yeah. 
How many pad split members do you see come with transportation of their own? A, a scooter, a bike, a car, or do they all walk to bus stops? 40% of people in Florida don't have cars. They don't have cars. So wow. it's fantastic that at the corner over here, we have a bus stop. Yeah. Uh, so that's one of the factors that we take a look wow. at. So for every two bedrooms, you want to have one parking space. Wow. Okay. I've had eight bedrooms or I have eight bedrooms that I've only had one or two people in. Wow. So I don't have a problem with the parking spaces because you see I have lots of parking spaces. But I also don't want to make it look like I have a car law outside the home. It's not, And you set the limit. Right. So on the platform, you put this is a four car type of house. Mm -hmm. No wow. more than four people can see this house after it's booked. So right. if you already have four parking spots used, nobody else with a car can see this house. Got don't it. allow it. Yeah, because you don't want it looking like a freaking oh, yeah. a dealership. Then you have neighbor complaints, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, another uh, point I want to touch on, like me personally, I'm an investor. I don't like to touch HOAs. I hate them. There's too many rules and bylaws and that can change. Maybe one day they're pad split friendly and the next day that the, the, the board has a hair up their ass and all of a sudden like, oh no, we can't do pad split. You know, it, it becomes a, a political thing, right? And me personally, I would suggest stay away from HOAs, but what are you seeing across the board? Are you seeing people are scaling in HOAs? Are they, do they, do, are they just don't care about the bylaws? What are... That's the same answer that I give, the same exact thing you just said. Oh, they okay. can change their oh, bylaws. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. They yeah. can love you one day, hate you the next. Yep. It can be short term and then they remove it. They could allow midterm, but then they remove it. Uh, yep. So it's, it's uh, not stable enough yeah. to really right. invest in HOAs. Yep. But if you're in an area that's like in Kissimmee where the, the HOA true. is kind of dying right. or they're optional $10, optional $5. Right, right, right. Then maybe, but okay. if you're like in a strong HOA neighborhood right. or your, your neighborhood's too vigilant, like right. let's say your neighbors are too nosy, then that you might want to consider factor, like factor that in. Yeah. Too. Yeah. So consider that guys, when you're looking at these properties and you're looking to scale your business, stay away from HOAs if you can at all costs, add that to your buy box. You know, don't go outside your buy box. Some people are like, you know, the new shiny object is pad split and they're like so excited and they rush into a deal. Uh, a mega example, I was on a zoom call with uh, yesterday and a young lady was crying because she bought a property that she's like literally upside down on and she's an investor. And it's like people are rushing into deals just to get into real estate and you don't have to do that. It's all about the buy. Mm -hmm. Take your time, you know, research your market, don't overanalyze, but add something to like your buy box of like, don't buy an HOA that I wouldn't go outside my buy box, right? Mm -hmm. That's how you should treat your investments, guys. Don't go outside your buy box. Don't go outside your wheelhouse. There is no if, ands, or buts. If somebody sends you a property, you look in two seconds and it looks like it's a great pad spins, five, six, seven, or eight bedrooms, and it's got an HOA, move to the next one. There's a lot of opportunities out there. So no point in rushing into a deal. So um, but okay, cool. So yeah, stay away from HOAs. There's no HOA here, so. Hundred percent. Now, I, th theoretical. I do kind of theoretical thing. Let's say that yes. this window is over here. Right. And let's say that that window is over there yeah. still. And this was just a closet. And let's say that by putting a wall down the middle, and you're able to punch a, a door on this side, mm -hmm. and this met the 80 square feet minimum. Yeah. You can technically, I would look at popping that back out, making that part of a room, and now making this into a bedroom because yeah. you have your egress and your door, and that's an easy way, kind of near each other, right, right, kind right. of screws it up. So that's another good point he, he just brought up. So when you're looking at your investment guys, when you're walking through these properties, you also wanna figure out how the, bed, or how the windows are laid out. Because by code, you need to be able to have somebody jump in and out of this window if there's a fire out, right? They're doing things by code. They're not just saying, hey, uh, put walls up and you're boxing somebody in, all of a sudden a hazard happens and they can't escape, right? And then somebody ends up dying. <laughs> so that's real, that's real stuff. So you wanna make sure when you're looking at your properties that they have the proper windows for people to get in and out of if they have to. There's multiple exits, right? So somebody can exit out of here and then somebody can exit out one of those windows. So this would be a bathroom. Have you seen this bathroom yet? I haven't walked in it. Yep, so check this out. It's got a shower. I do love showers over uh, bathtubs. So yeah. if I can like tap on it really quickly, when I do my rehabs for uh, pad splits, I usually rehab, refi, uh, and then put the walls up. So mm -hmm. I don't like bathtubs because who needs to lay in a bathtub uh, in a co-living space? Mm -hmm. Right. And you want to reduce bathroom time. Right. So what I do in my properties and what I guide hosts is put mirrors in your bedroom so that people can do their hairs in the room. Right. And I do stand up showers. So in the stand up shower, they're in and they're out. They're not necessarily sitting around thinking about their lives. Yeah. 
Five. It's kind of like they're not getting comfortable in here. They're not like this is a bathroom to where you would stand in here, you would take a shower, and you would get out because it's like it's smaller, but it gets the job done and people can move on with their life. Mm -hmm. So that's what like he's saying is like same thing with the common errors. They're trying to mitigate from people uh, because if somebody sits in here and takes a bath, guess what? Other members are going to be delayed from their work day, from their school day, whatever. Remember, these type of people who are going to uh, rent these properties are the type of people who are gonna have very fast-paced lifestyles or need to go They're they're in school or you know, they, they're working three to four jobs So they're like boom boom boom, you know, they need to make a, a, a something to eat take a shower go to sleep go to work, right? So you're really you know ruining the cycle when you have somebody just hanging out in the bathroom and not moving on So you almost want to make them uncomfortable a little bit <laughs> in a space like this so they can get out of the get out of the uh, The bathroom so all right cool. All right this is the AC closet. Should I make a room here? Oh, well, I thought it was regular closet. I was nah. going to say make it into storage. Yeah. Well, uh, I want to talk to you. You do want to lock your AC, though. Yeah, it is locked. It's so, locked. So normally, no, oh, yeah, AC it's Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so they can't go. Yeah, so you want to make sure that that doesn't happen so you, they're not running up your electric bill. Do you think 72 is a good temperature or do you raise it up higher than that? Uh, my property manager sets the temperature. I am so removed off oh, my day-to-day -day operations got it. that uh, that's why it's almost absolutely hands-off. Got it. Got it. Passively does 90% and your property manager does that final 10%. Nice. I love that. So typically I use Nest thermostats that you can control from your phone and you don't have to worry about, you know, it puts a lock on it and then you can also raise or lower uh, the temperature. Speaking of AC, if somebody was to add a bedroom and hypothetical scenario right here, mm -hmm. uh, and I know some people might have the vision for this or not, but let's say that we did have a window in this, this, this area. We made it a bedroom. How does the air conditioner work? What's the rule? Do they have to have just one AC vent going into the room? Two? Is there a minimum? One. One. Just one? Just one. Just one. Uh, and it could be anything. Central, window unit. It could be... If you have one window and you use a window unit, you technically can't because it can't obstruct the window as the Oh, ingress. gotcha, gotcha. Only if you had two bedroom windows, then you can do it on Correct. one. Correct. Gotcha. So there has to be, again, going back and forth, guys, when you're looking at these properties, got to be a point where they can enter and exit two points of of uh, enter and exit. Yep. On and it one. can technically be a door. So let's say that door actually went outside. Yep. Then I would tell you, yeah, you could probably cut out a room and make that as an egress, but it goes into a garage. Yeah. No, I know. I was thinking about that. I was like, how can I make this another bedroom? Or you punch a window, but that would probably require a permit. It does require a permit because right. you're doing something to the external Right, right, right. No, yeah, 100%. And that's the same thing with the bathroom. I would you know, want a permit. That's, that takes too long. Now, going on storage, you touched on storage a, a little bit ago. I have a 20 by 25 garage here. Do you think this can be utilized for storage? Like, this to me is dead space. And it's funny because... When the pad split concept came up, I was always the guy to chop houses in half and make them more bedrooms and house hack them. And now that the concept's here, it's like, holy shit, I should have thought about this faster. What do you think about this space? Do I, do I rent it out as far as like, do I make like little storage units out of it and charge an additional whatever, $15, $20 or? I see rooms like this and I think bedrooms. Yeah, me too. But that again. But then outside of bedrooms, if you go, right, absolutely not, I'm not making this into a bedroom, mm -hmm. storage. Yeah. At the end of the day, you could charge for storage space for your car. You could charge for, you could put cubbies and in the cubbies, you lock the cubbies and charge for the cubby space. Okay. So what would a storage space for a car be? How much would that bring me a month? It, we don't have a, an amount there and we allow you to go ahead and kind of be experimental with that oh, because okay. maybe somebody has a nice car that they don't want to keep outside. Could they filter in the platform to where they can find storage space for their car is there no a way? but that would probably be on the title so on uh, airbnbs okay. you can't really change too much on certain titles and you can't do stuff with certain photos i would highlight that my house in the title house with car space yeah or garage or something right. like that and in the photo i would highlight this got it and in the description i would highlight this yeah okay Got it. Uh, and then what about cubby spaces? Do, do, is that something that I can kind of just charge anything? Yes. Have yeah. you seen people doing it? Is it a thing? Yep. Yeah. Uh, closet space inside the house, in the halls. I've seen hosts take that, it, leave it kind of empty, and then go put a number on it or a letter and then lock the door and then attach and say, hey, I got closet A, I got closet B, C, and D. Mm -hmm. These are different price points. Which ones are you interested in? Right. And then they'll rent that out. Got it. Okay. So I can get something makeshift it, storage unit, put four or five of them in here and just rent it out. Yeah, per. you can enclose this if you'd like and, into like little rooms yeah. of storage and yeah. charge per. And then obviously washer and dryer is a good amenity. It's required. 
Oh, it's required. It's required. Oh shit. And okay. if and if it wasn't for that, if that wasn't there, I would say that that could be your egress, and you could go ahead and make a room on this side of yeah. the garage. But if you go ahead and try to put a wall here, then you're kind of limiting your washer and dryer. Okay. Well. Okay. Another another thought. Right. Obviously, you can see this is original window. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew, this is a window that is on the other side of this wall. And this is actually, I boarded this up. So when I bought the home on this side of the wall, there was a window and I, cl I closed it in. So that was actually there already and it was fully permitted. That's how the house was built. Mm -hmm. So do you see anything else like I should make this a room or no? It doesn't Still go out. So since it doesn't go out, even if you did open it up to just be a window, it just jumps into another room. So gotcha. doesn't. Okay. Well, me personally, like I'm just like you, I would love to maximize the space, add a, you know, some walls and make this bedrooms. It's just, again, like from a cost of fit efficiency standpoint, I have to add another bathroom technically. Yeah, it's limited. So for every four bedrooms, you want to have one bathroom One bath, space. exactly. So I need to add a bath in here. You're talking, you know, so logistically 70, expensive. Yeah, logistically it's too expensive for me. So I would just try to get, you know, storage space and rent out storage space. It's uh, the best investment decision. I would say, take a look at layout, like you were saying, take a look at what you have, yeah. look to maximize what you have, yeah. and then go with that. Yeah, yeah. Like in, in the perfect world, yes, I would love to make this more units. Then we're also talking about permitting, city coming in here, they wanna see, you know, things done right. That can take, you know, a long time. I would say to get a project up like this, it would take, Somebody moving fast, knowing what they're doing, a good GC, you're talking about four to five months. Easy, if they did it the proper way with electrical, uh, windows, all that stuff. You're, you're converting this into another space, so living space, which I've actually done on one of my other properties where I permitted a carport, enclosed it, and made it a living space. It's expensive. It took me, it, it, it's expensive. It took me about 50 grand, and it took me about uh, eight months. But right. I'm sure the value jumped up. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, the value, the, the return on investment is just astronomical, yeah. like, and so, don't get me wrong, it made sense there, but here probably I wouldn't do that. So um, I'll just keep this thing, this thing as What's is. your other half look like? So let's, okay, so I wanna walk you through here really quick. Now, remember how I told you earlier that, that th when I bought this from the previous owner, he had this area was open, right? Let's just think of stove and this was like this, but this was an, like, this was an open space. Like you can walk through the other half. Like I know it sounds crazy, but you were able to walk through the other half. Wasn't really 36 inches, I don't think, I can't remember, but you were able to physically walk through. Or maybe it was right here and I moved the stove. Actually, I think the stove was right here. Anyways, I did something, but this, this was open. This is all the way it was open. Mm -hmm. So you can trail right through here. Yep. On the other side of this wall is a one one. Now, from a pad split perspective, I'm just trying to figure out like, how do I maximize that space where I'm gonna take you right now? So whether opening this back up and having people have access to that bathroom, but the only problem is that bathroom's in another bedroom. So you'll see in a second, let me show you. Yeah, typically when um, making those changes, let's say that by opening that up and by getting that one additional bathroom out, since I can add three or four more rooms, I'm adding that bathroom, <laughs> I'm taking the wall down. But if it means like, hey, I'm taking the wall down just so that I can go ahead and expose one bedroom, one bath, yep. to not add any bedrooms, I probably wouldn't. So let me show you, cause this is gonna open up Again, more storage. I got more storage. I have a pad split ADU that looks like that. Nice. It's a whole unit to itself. So I was thinking about making that a unit too, but I need to, I need to add a bathroom. So I need to add bathrooms. So I might have to hit you up for this vendor list. So this is a one, one real cool. And so what I was talking about that, where I was just now referring to, let me put the light on here. What I'm referring to is this area right here that actually goes so where you see this, this look in here really quick, that actually where that I was talking about or that wall opening was, you would connect and walk right through. So now I got your mind thinking, I can tell. <laughs> well, cause to me, I put a wall across. I did, you just have to figure out how to get people in and out. So if it means opening this space up so they can walk in, this is a hall, that's a bathroom, obviously a secondary kitchen. Now you have room and room. And now you have added an additional room and you didn't Okay, really do so much. you're saying take a wall from here. All the way across. All the way across. Or which I can if move you want to do a weird little cut out of a wall, then that's absolutely fine. You just have to worry about the, this opening. Well, this. I can, so I still have another foot of space right here. So I can push that fridge over. You're saying make a wall right here, make this a bedroom. Correct. 
Now they have a private entrance, which I can charge. private egress is more money. Yeah, and I can charge more for, and then the way the person gets to this pro uh, this wall, or this bedroom, is through, right right through here. Speak, yeah, because the way I'm looking at it is, how do you get into this apartment, or how do you get to this unit if you remove this door, if this door is now not accessible? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't add another entrance, but if you can open this space up, ah. you just opened up to another 900 yes. to $1,100. So they would open up a door here, they would have access to this kitchen, Okay. They're twin, cool. they're twin rooms because you already have the... Yeah, I already got the mini splits. Yep. Dude, nice. And then another wall here, right? Oh, actually, another... An, well, you just actually, continue I don't, it all the way down. No, well, yeah, another wall here. Then they'd have a door going into here. Yep. Boom. You, you, and this then is, they'd this walk right through here. here. Yeah. You turn, yep. door. Yep, yep. Well, and then they'd have access there. to the kitchen as well. Correct. Yeah, and then there they would be able to walk all the way through here. Correct. This person wouldn't have a private entrance, but this person would. So on pad split, if you have a private entrance, you can charge how much more a month? Do you think? Probably another five dollars, six dollars, but that's on top okay. of the already two hundred and thirty, forty dollars that you're charging. Yeah. So okay, what would you think here? So per per these side these bedrooms, you're at two thirty a bedroom over there. Two fifty. Let's say two hundred to two thirty. Let's say those smaller bedrooms on that side, probably 200 a, month, 200 a week. So what I would normally do is figure out your anchor point. So what's your most expensive room, ideally, based okay. off the of size, and then take a look at what is your no frills room, and then figure that pricing out. So if 205 is your cheapest, and then 250 is your most expensive, then kind of work backwards on. Yeah, yeah. These are twin rooms, so they're about the same price, but this one should be about $5 more because of the door. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. And so this falls under number fifth cheapest wow. room. And then this would be a notch above. And then your bigger rooms on the other side would fall higher than. Dude, this, I was really trying to figure out how do I maximize this unit? Now you said put the wall up here. <laughs> it's crazy because you don't get the vision, right? Like, I, like for me coming from where I'm come from, like I have always chopped up houses, right? And I was just trying to figure out like, where would I put the wall here? And you said right here, make this two rooms. So that makes absolute sense. And guys, remember this, it's not really costly. All it is is two by fours, right? Every 16 inches, right? And adding maybe, you probably don't even have to add electrical outlets, right? Cause you already have your switches so everywhere. So two by fours every 16 inches. And then you're putting up drywall here guys and a, and a 36 opening for a door. And then this would be the hallway. So where both these twin rooms can use this bathroom right shared bathroom yep right and then they would this guy would walk through here and i'd open that back up yep wow wow yeah god that is crazy and that's not that's drywall two by fours nails and a good handyman or a good you know carpenter can knock that out no problem same thing here and the beauty about this guy is another thing i want to point out if i ever had to convert this property back to where let's say pads but i always think every time i do an investment i always think about what's my worst case scenario He's telling me best case scenario, and it sounds pretty. I'm gonna give it a shot, right? But I always think about what my worst case scenario. For me to take down these walls or nothing, I can keep everything, it does, it's not gonna ruin the integrity of my floor or anything. Taking them down, and, and it's, it's just nothing, it's nothing to it. It takes, you know, the demo would be nothing if I had to go back to original long-term rental or I wanted to sell the property or whatever, because I know people are probably thinking like, oh, if I put up all these configurations, well, you know, I wanna sell the property in the future, this can affect me, blah, 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 whatever, so, okay. So, dude, I'm making this two rooms. I'm excited. I would 100% make think, it into two rooms. What do you think? So based on what you know, based on location, you think about 200 for each one of these rooms is fair? I would say slightly higher because we have properties in 08, 818 that are 205 Dude, this is a prime location. That's why I'm saying. This is a prime location, guys. This is Winter Park, College Park, great area, bus stops. You know, like we're taking all these things in consideration, not just proximity if they if they if they don't have a vehicle which you said 40 percent of people in florida don't have a i didn't know that 40 percent of people on pad split oh on pad split sorry so it's on pad split. On pad split. so if you okay. logically think it, if you're if the studio costs in orlando is 1800 and then you have to provide three times the income to get an apartment and then you have to multiply that times 12 wow. you're looking above sixty thousand dollars how many people in these big box stores or in the outlets or in the malls or in entry level jobs around the city yeah. or even hospitality make $60,000? Wow. So crap ton that don't. Right, right. So if you can't afford that, then how can you afford a car payment? Yeah. What I really like about Pad Split and what has really, you know, pulled me to Pad Split is we're, we're, we're creating and you know, a solution for these members, these individuals to be able to have an opportunity to have 
a nice stepping stone in their life. Like mm -hmm. we know that this isn't a forever option, right? Nope. What would you say the retention rate is on, on members? You nine know? to 11 months on average. Nine to 11 months, that's incredible. Like nine to 11 months, it's a stepping stone. When I first got started in the real estate investment, you know, what's really made me relate to pad split so much is a couple things. I actually started renting a bedroom out when I first started years ago back in my career. I started renting a bedroom out for $400 a month. I had the roommates. So not only am I creating the product now with pad split, but I have lived and I have been a consumer in the, in the product. So I know what it's like to have noisy roommates. I know what it's like to have somebody who doesn't clean up the bathroom. And I'm able to give this solution to somebody because you know what? I remember back in the day, I used to go on Facebook and go on uh, 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 bedroom renting sites and, and not know who I'm actually renting from. They have created a, a, eco, uh, a ecosphere to where you can go to a platform and you can feel safe and secure and know who you're living with and know what their reputation is. Because remember, they're actually rating their members. It's not like, you know, Bob, Joe, and Susie are living in this house and they're shit tenants, right? Or they're shit members, right? They're actually have ratings. They have a, 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 a they have structure that they they have to abide by. If not, mm -hmm. guess what? They lose a pad split uh, membership, yeah, right? Yeah. And they can't go back on the platform anymore. So people don't want to lose affordable housing. They don't want to risk that. And you guys, are able to you know provide that that's that's freaking awesome so i'm able to relate in so many different ways and a quick story i've actually been doing pad split for years now and i didn't even know it because one of my other homes i actually rent the bedrooms out and this is before i even heard of ever pad split and it's actually a smaller small property and I, i've been renting bedrooms out for eight to a thousand dollars a month i make them sign one year leases yeah so and this is actually in the uh the Soto area. I have bedroom rentals in there, and it never ever was ever on pad split. Never knew about pad split or anything. I was just like, oh, I want to do bedroom rentals here. How and so empty I, is it? Oh, never. It's never empty. It's full all the time. So I understand the model. I understand that the demand for it because every time I put those bedroom rentals up, my phone blows up. And I'm all, and I'm posting these things on Facebook. These this company is geared toward solely looking for people who need bedroom rentals and who need a stepping stone. That's awesome. Like. I, they're taking all that hassle away from me having to go on Facebook, getting blown up by messages, not knowing who's coming in. Like mm -hmm. th they're taking all that that away. So you guys are doing the marketing. You guys are doing screening, screening the collection of the money, collection of the money, and handling the people manage people management. All for fifteen percent. Yep. Wow. No other fees. It's fourteen point seven five, and that's then, including the processing fee already. Okay. So it comes out to about fifteen percent of the gross income. Yep. And so. Just like for me, like I own a co-hosting business, right? For short-term rentals. Mm -hmm. And so I don't make money if my properties aren't producing. So what's wh wh where they have skin in the game is, is if the properties aren't booked, they're not making money. So it's you know advantageous for them to find more people to book these properties so they can make more money and they can continue to grow. How big is Pat's how many mem how many uh, How many employees do you guys have? We have over 170 employees across the world. Uh, wow. It's worldwide. Uh, we have people in South America. Worldwide. We have people in Europe, Turkey, wow. United States. Worldwide already? Worldwide. Worldwide. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. Not an off camera, but I have a single family home with extra rooms. I consider doing, we're talking to Javier about doing maybe a midterm rental for nurses. How does pad split work for like a homeowner who has extra bedrooms? Are they eligible to put those rooms on pad split or? No, <laughs> yeah. no, because we can't control the homeowner. And so what happens there is that there's a set of people right. following rules. You have a homeowner that doesn't necessarily have to follow rules. And so there's no way to mitigate or to stop certain things from happening. So we can't just tell you, hey, stop being you in your own house. And then there's still the, the so because the members are staying in the house or signing membership agreements, now there's multiple unrelated people. You're unrelated. They're unrelated to you as a group. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard to argue that. It takes away the uniform of, of, of pad split, 100%. right? And so that's the reason why, you know, but you could do other, other strategies for, for renting those bedrooms yeah, out. It makes, it makes total sense. I was just yeah. asking because I feel <clears throat> since I had the question, I know that there's probably people watching this video that are going to have that same question yeah. and have, maybe it hasn't been answered. Before. If you have an ADU, if you had a setup like that mm -hmm. where you that was livable and then you had the house, then yeah, because it's separate. Or if you had this unit to yourself and then you had that part of the house, then you can do it because they're not connected. So if you have a duplex, you could do that. If you have multifamily, you can do that. Uh, you just have to keep both separate. Right. Awesome.
Yeah. Cool. I want to ask you one quick question though, uh, Ray. Now, is there any rule? Now, typical door openings about, I believe, 36? 36 inches, right? This isn't 36, right? Is this, would I get disqualified if I open? Because what I would be doing is opening this up, not this opening. Do I disqualify at all? I would open, what's keeping you from opening this? It just, I, look at that, bro. Oh, it's solid. Yeah, it's solid. And this is the bathroom on the other side. Because of the fact that people come in all shapes and sizes, yeah. you would limit how many people can fit through this. Well, this would only be used for one person for one room, right? No, they would come in, or they oh, could come in through the main entrance, but they have the ability to still go in through here. Yeah. Because this so, is So, okay, no, another question. This just came to my mind. I have two kitchens, right? Technically, could probably charge a little more. This is what I'm saying. On this side. That's what I was just saying. I have two kitchens. Like, right now, the way I have this set up, it's, it's exclusively for this side. But if I open that up, other members are going to want to come in here. Okay. Is there any way where I can exclude them and this is only available for these members, this kitchen and stuff like that? To where now they know not only do I have a private room on this side of the home. Because I, I, if I was thinking as a member, I would like, man, I want to be on this side of the house. Why? Because there's only one other bedroom that would be less, that would mitigate noise, right? Mm -hmm. I, I only have one person here. I have nobody there. I got nobody in the back. Right, I got my own parking area over here, and I got my own kitchen. So to me, there's more value here, right? So mm -hmm. am I able to do that? You could charge more. You can't exclude because it's open. Okay, it's technically open, but you get 100% charge more because of the amenities that are close to the on this side, and it's less density, so it's less people moving around. Yeah. So uh, typically, like with duplexes, for example, with duplexes, I like to tell hosts don't combine houses, keep them separate. Mm -hmm. and keep them separate because now you have less people and it still adds up to be the same amount of people. Yeah. But in your this case, is, yeah. you're opening it up because of that door specifically. Yeah. yeah, unless I put another door here somewhere because I have a window there. That's correct. If you put another door there. Where um, I can make two private, but. If you could get rid of this fridge. Well, so this is what my, so this fridge, I can get rid of it. I'm not, I have no problem with that. I can slide it over another foot and, and have that, that wall. If you could get rid of this fridge, for example, and now do a room that's this space. And now this is a hall. You don't have to open that up. Okay. I like that. What, okay, let me ask you this. Pad Split Pro, OG, 77, right? 40 Triple times? OG. Whatever. No. <laughs> 100 units on Pad Split. What would you I would think, think about it? You don't have to answer two seconds, but you, I don't know. I'm fast thinker, bro. Yeah. I'm from New York. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I was, I'm Dominican. I'm smart talking. I would measure this out to go ahead and see how much I'd keep them separate. Because the rule is 80 square foot minimum. Mm -hmm. So you got to go eight foot. And so even if you don't touch the switch, but you're probably going to want to have the switch in the room anyway. That's okay. Easy peasy. Uh, so eight foot, and you're for sure getting 10 feet going down. Yeah. And you already have your egresses. Yeah. And it, okay. And it's funny because you have uh, the fire extinguisher. That's a requirement in a pad split kitchen. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. And That's... so it's there already. Dude, this is already set up, man. This I'm... is already a pad split yeah. room. Other than the fact that you should probably put a dresser here or, or something like that. Yeah. Um, now the only thing I that do. I see an issue with is if I do that, then I'm not getting airflow from this this section, which I can add another mini split to get air in this area. Because remember, if I put that wall up here and then I come here. Can't you do like the air, the vents on top of the doorway to help? I can, I, I'd have to ask my AC guy if that would be feasible to cool this area off because you know in Florida, bro, it gets hot and I don't want, you know, mold, yeah, 100%. Problems, mold, mold, mold problems. Um, okay, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll consider that. But that's, again, that's, that's small little stuff, right? That I would do. So I agree with you, keep it separate because what are we doing? We're mitigating other members from coming over here and having saying, oh, well, you know what? The kitchen is being used over there or Johnny's being messy in the kitchen. I like Susie and Bob on this side. They're very clean. Oh, let me go use the kitchen on this side, right? That's what I, that's the way I think. That would be the more expensive room out of the two. This one. Yeah, of course. At that point, because now you have a reach in closet versus a dresser. Yeah. Um, well, no, I would have two closets then because if I don't open that up, I got two closets. You're, you're still going to have to make a, a, a wall. You still have to make a wall for the bathroom, right? But now that closet isn't really a closet for this. I would enclose uh, that and then maybe make it a charge. storage, storage and charge. Cool. And you want extra space? Charge. What would you think? So I can add extra fifteen dollars a week. 10? I'd say for a bigger closet, but yeah, ten, ten's fine. To fifteen's fine. I mean, you make the number up at the end of the day. I yeah. seen people start at fifteen and, and get, like he said, get a feel from the market. Your alternative is go ahead and 
get a closet space at one of those bigger storage places and sure they'll give you a promo at $30 but then they're like hey it's season your price has gone up $50 $60 mm -hmm. so as opposed to going to one of these larger storage facilities you can rent that at a flat fee and it doesn't go up or down gotcha so it's a it's a lot more are friendlier. you talking about like a storage uh for correct. sell storage correct gotcha okay because that's by seasons like hey it's high season your price just went up ten dollars this month hey right. it's low season we're dropped well i've never heard anyone right. drop prices. right it's just like airbnb self-storage units they, they they can fluctuate their prices at any time and so that's why a lot of people like self-storage because it's like airbnb you can maneuver the the, the fee there's no one locked in right oh so, uh but yeah no i think i would just make that a storage wall there on that side and then like you said wall this off keep this whole side separate and then the beauty about this I also i like about this side i don't know if you realize when we first walked in so parking. you got your own parking so now i got two parking areas i can fit easy four to five cars on that side i'd probably do four max everybody will be able to have their car because that's a big lot do you think four is fair yeah it's more than fair you only I, have four rooms well, I know, I know, that's what I'm it's saying. It's way more than there. Uh, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. No. so I got four cars on that side, on that side of the lot, and this is a corner lot, guys, so I have a real, you know, real big lot here, and then I can do uh, one, one or two cars on this side, probably one car, because they'll probably be fighting with each other trying to back out of here. But then, I have the other storage here as well. Like, dude, this place has got endless amounts of storage. Dude, I think I might make more money on storage on this property than I make in bedrooms. <laughs> like, I, got, I just got so much storage, seriously, dude. You like, do. have you, you seen do. this much storage at one property? Not at one patch. No. And I can't tell you to keep storage and everything. So I'd yeah. say like, uh, look at your other options um, on storage, like offer bike rentals, offer, offer extra stuff. I like that, dude. Because we're in the area that might require that. Like if it was uh, further out, if we were in Chiliota, I probably wouldn't say, hey, give people bikes. But we're in an area where dude. You, you could ride to Ivanhoe Village. Wow. Wow. Do you like the electrical bikes? Yeah, if you yeah. offer that as an amenity and, and you, you obviously have, I would put a camera in the, in the storage area. You can't put, okay, so FYI, uh, you can't put cameras in the common areas yeah. or in bedrooms. But outside, outside of the property, fantastic. Yeah. And if you have a big space like that storage unit you have, probably a camera face in that area. Right. It's just to like, see who's taking the, the, the scooter or not. Yeah especially if you have that type of side business, mm -hmm. but offer that to us a subscription. Figure nice. out what they're charging in the city for the scooters and charge a little less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd probably do bicycles just because it's a little bit less moving parts, like beach cruiser, something that doesn't have a bunch of gears because mm -hmm. I feel like scooters, you'd be replacing them or fixing them all the time. And I feel like a bike will yield you just as much money. And it's very simple. I would get a bike with no shifting gears, literally like a beach cruiser, so they can take it from, you know, they're not going 900 miles. They don't need th nothing fancy. They're probably going within five mile distance to get to their workplace. Mm -hmm. Would you say, how far are people living from where they, they they're, where, how far are these members living from where they commute to? That's just, the biggest appeal of a pad split. Yeah. So when they're searching for rooms, they're searching usually based off location. And yeah. they're, Base, we, we don't have a metric on miles. I can't tell you like two miles. But it's the reason question, why though. I would move into this house would be because I work off of Fairbanks. Right. So I work in Winter Park and right. this is the closest house in Winter Park. Yeah. And we don't have many yet. So I would assume if I live closer to Park Ave and there's a pad split in Park Ave, which I highly doubt, I would move into that house. Are there any pad splits around here close? We are. Yeah. College, there's a college park property that's just one fully live uh on the other side i have one on maitland 300 units in in, in or, orlando yep okay but in this general area it's slim pine hills slim, would be the closest yeah guys very limited very limited competition when i go into uh, this type of business i'm looking at competition 10 years from now it could be saturated who knows but i know that there's a statistic where us to catching up on the affordability of housing is going to be years and years and years I mean, you can do this probably with every house in this neighborhood and you would not have oversupply. 100%. Right? Based on the demand that you're gonna have. Now, do you see, this leads to my next question. Do you see that it's more like medical professionals that are like in like residences that are going into you know their careers but they have a lot of student debt or are you seeing more like somebody who's just working three to four jobs what are you seeing like the demographic of these people we booking these places we do have that i say so, booking because i'm so str minded person but yeah the, the, the members of pad split so for pad split no college students no college students not at all they have to have a full-time job got it and so it could be any full-time job. 
I would say that depending on where your house is, is what you'll attract. And so if you're near a hospital, you'll attract more hospital. But if you're near a school, it's actually the teachers or cleaning crew really? or 100%. A lot of them can't afford to live in Chiliota. A lot of them can't afford to live in Alafaya, Avalon. My bedroom rentals over in Soto, I got a guy who works at Universal and then my other guy's program. So for pad split, it's kind of unreliable so, to have college students and their right. mindset is something else. It's yeah. fixed to hang out party. So post-grads, yes. It's not no to college students. It's you have to have a full-time job. Gotcha. So you can be a college student with a full-time job. Yeah. But that's a requirement. My houses in, in Richmond Heights in 32811 and 05, they have Disney bus drivers, universal employees, yeah. people that work in downtown Orlando. So, but it's close to what that house Yeah. Is. My next question, what, what about age range? What's the, the- 35 is the age. Average age? The, the, bit, the, the most amount of people we have are 35 year old males. Really? And then the second biggest would be 50 to, around 55, 60, up. Yeah, I always feel like when I, do, when I do my bedroom rentals, I always feel like I always want to pair everybody with like all males or all females. Are you seeing that females have the confidence to stay at these properties with other males? Really? Wow, okay. Because they, they know that they've went through the same screening process. They know that they didn't just pick someone off of Craigslist. Yep. They know that they qualified for those rooms at minimum and that mm -hmm. pad split is managed in the people component of it. And so I'll see houses that have two women, four guys, um, one, two guys, bunch of girls. We kind of don't. We don't tip the scales on that because imagine you wait for just women. Mm -hmm. How long are you going to wait to fill your house up with mm -hmm. just women? And you could deny people if you'd like until you have an all women's, all guys house. But we're just trying to provide, again, affordable housing. You know, quotations on affordable because affordable in Winter Park is different than affordable. And right. It's all perspective, right? I guess. 100%. It's like California. <laughs> yeah, like, we're, we're going to LA and then like, that, what's affordable? Yeah, I would say in California, if I had to guess, I would say five. Because like a little studio apartment, like gets your small space, is probably five, six thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a lot of money. In Miami, that average number instead of 205 in Orlando is 305. Wow. Started. With rooms I've seen already higher into the 400s. Wow. In Jacksonville, you're looking at around 175 average. Yeah. But my most expensive room in Jacksonville is 325. Yeah. My personal most expensive room. I want to mention one thing now. It just actually came to my mind. Did you see downtown they did the co living uh, high rise? Yeah. So and Disney's downtown. doing it too. Oh, really? Disney's providing co living wow. housing for their. So, what is this telling you guys? These big companies like Pad Split and a high rise downtown that costs multi multi millions they've done the market research they've done the they've done the studies they're not just making blind investments they're actually going into this with a business plan like if you're seeing things like that being put up in that type of location that is co-living what does that tell you guys don't be like, you know be like burger king follow mcdonald's everywhere they go and put a location next to them like and that's kind of the way i look at this is like you guys have done the market research they're doing all the heavy lifting you don't have to do that, right? I just onboard my property, put up the walls, put a furnishing. And the other thing I like to say, coming from an Airbnb background, because I'm heavy on Airbnb, I like how minimum everything is. Like I can take a room, once the walls are up or if they're not up already, I can just put a bed in there, a, 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 a dresser, and call it the day. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have to do all the furnishings that it costs. Like to furnish a kitchen typically costs about $1,500 when you look in all the knives and the, the pots, the pans, the silverware. It's a lot of money. Like you don't have to provide that. Here, in this case, I would, and it's going to make it even more appealing. So like I already have a one up on a lot of pad, pad split hosts because I've already actually been on pad split and I looked at like these, my competition and it's like their, their, their layout's not as nice as this. And so when people are looking at properties, they're looking at your finishes, your amenities. Mm -hmm. These are all amenities these guys that that I have I have a blender I have a coffee maker I have nice knives I have all this nice stuff I have a nice location I have bus stops nearby so they're gonna look at my property and like wow we're gonna we're, we're definitely we're taking this one you down. have a room I mean you have a you have a home as opposed to a room yeah and Correct. so that's the key differential when looking at a patch split yep. house it's how can I have this person a little bit longer yep. and how can I maintain people as opposed to having them switch every other month or get someone new in three yeah. weeks no, I want my people happy. I want my people retained and so that they're there for as long as they need to be. Yep. And then so I could get these extra returns on my yeah. house. Yeah. So I'm going to I want to wrap up with this. One of the things I have as an Airbnb host and which I had problems with this property, I had problems with code enforcement. I wasn't regulated. You don't fall in the city ordinances. Obviously, I sign a, a lease with Patsmith. They become my tenant and now they have members that actually 
uh, are, are the tenants uh, of this this property or members, members, however you want to call it, right? I'm I'm in the the landlord slash STR uh, uh, mindset. Do I need to get any inspections from the city after I put up walls, or do I need to get any you know uh, 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 zone? Any, do I need to get anything special outside of just listing my property to you guys? Because I want to know that I'm doing the right thing, and I don't have you know, a code enforcement officer are knocking on my door saying, Hey, you guys have a co-living operation here. Like, is there anything I need to worry about? Or do I need to double check or any extra layer that you would say I need to look into? Or do I just go ahead and get these walls up and I can go ahead and start pad splitting? So for, for pad splits perspective, we tell you go ahead and renovate your property to code and do it with permits. Uh, are there people doing flips today, Airbnbs, pad splits with no permits? Yeah. yeah, there's a ton. On a project or two, I might have yeah. gone ahead and yeah. done, some, done some modifications. But now, with that being done correctly, when it comes to the city coming to you and going, hey, uh, you have yourself an Airbnb, and that's actually happened to the other person in the college park house. Hey, we've heard that your house is an Airbnb. It's not an Airbnb, and I'm yeah. sure it was a neighbor as well that said it. And this is the lease that I have. Yes, that's and what I And the would lease do. reflects a one-year lease with yep. one tenant. Yep. Now the people that are in the houses are part of that LLC as members of that LLC. Right. And it, before talking to the city any further, you can go ahead and talk to Pat's Play Host Support, and they'll guide you in the process on how to talk to the city and go through the process. Right. And I have a good understanding of that already, but like I know a lot of people are going to be in the same position as me. And I think what's going to end up happening, here's my prediction. My prediction is, is you're going to have all these cities and counties, obviously they're regulated. They've always been regulated by, mm -hmm. by the way, guys, there's tons of markets that are STR friendly, short term rental friendly, but over the years, Airbnb has grown so fast and rapidly people are A, uneducated or B, don't care about the regulations and they just do Airbnb anyways. So when you see on the news, oh, this is in, uh, this market's getting shut down for Airbnb, that was never a friendly STR market. But now you have Pat's Play, it's a co-living and you're able to sign a lease with them and be doing things legally and have the, you're, you're in the correct zoning, you're, you're providing co-housing able to uh, solve the affordable housing, which is super huge. Mm -hmm. And I have to worry about being shut down. Like you have, what I'm saying is you have a scalable business model here. This is a scalable business model and you don't have to worry about all these, you know, crazy regulations and stuff like that. So that's one thing that comes to mind when I'm coming from STR and I could have that problem, by the way, I could have neighbors saying, Hey, Oh, there's an Airbnb and call code enforcement on me again. I'm sure it might happen. They call a so, hundred times. Yeah. Yeah. Technically you still have the neighbor problem. Yeah. Like the neighbor yeah. problem will always be a neighbor yeah. problem. You don't want to be, you don't want to put a pad split in a neighborhood and right. not match the neighborhood. Right. So if there's cars parked on the grass in your neighborhood, right. then you're not going to stick out. But yep. if there's, and we don't park on grass necessarily speaking, but I'm just saying that you want to do, you do want to match a neighborhood. If you notice that there's a lot of Subarus in your neighborhood and people are very vigilant right. and they're looking around and they're like, Hey, who's this person? Mm -hmm. Then you might want to look to flip the house or do something different. Right, right, right. So that's, that's great tips because you need to, you know, figure out what, what best fits for pass but i remember getting back in real estate way back in the day you know since 2015 for me today but not only just in the pats because i see the vision but i also see where you're having troubles with regulations like i had here right like i had this property open for four years in business and now code enforcement knocks on my door and you know now i have a, now i'm having problems right and so you don't run you're not running a scalable model right yeah. and so Pads, but like he said, it's a scalable model. And going back to the permitting thing, technically they want you to permit every damn thing these days. If I put new kitchen cabinets on my on my, on my kitchen wall, they want you to permit That's everything, right. right? Everything in a home technically needs to be permitted. So it, it's really like you said, subjective. If that person's going to take that extra step and go, hey, I'm going to go, I'm going to go permit this, you know? So, so. Um, yeah. So just as we close out, Ray, you know, uh, I'll guide the final question here, which I think is really important for the viewers. If someone's an investor and they have property or they're looking to get into investing, how do they get started with pad split? Let's say pad split is their exit. What's like their first steps to becoming a pad split host? I would suggest you work with me directly. <laughs> so other than working with me directly, I also work as a, as a unit with my wife. She also works for pad split. Uh, we're the most knowledgeable account executives in the company, having real estate experience and also pad split experience and managing our portfolio on pad split. And so reach out to us, DM us, get sent us your property the same way that Javier did. Javier's like, hey, if this is my property, what do you think? So the same way is the same way that I get the same messages. So reach out to me, send me properties, set appointments, 
Uh, my phone number is fairly public or very public actually. Um, and I'll be able to assess your property and let you know if it makes sense, doesn't make sense or guide you in the process. Yeah, that's awesome. And that saves so much time. Like today he gave me a vision that I didn't have before, right? I kind of had it, but I, my vision really where it was really blurry was this unit actually, not that unit. That unit was pretty straightforward. This unit, I was like, how do I maximize this space? But putting the wall up, and I think I'm gonna go with that strategy like you said, just go with it right here, mm -hmm. and then keeping this whole separate. That way we're mitigating noise, we're mitigating guest interaction, and this side's gonna be a lot more premium, even though this might be a smaller room right here, but this would be more premium to somebody because they're just one person. And the so. other side would be premium too, because now you're still with four people. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, there's a lot of things to consider, but um, one of the things I, I, I want to say is like, I see pad split just blowing up, which you guys already are. And across the world, I didn't even know that. Like, yep. I learned so much today. You guys are across the world, 175 so employees? Employees across the world. Uh, yeah, 175, 175 employees. Wow. Uh, we have engineering teams uh, across the world. We have management. We have the CX department that manages the people. It, it depends on you know what fraction or what part of the company. And you guys opened up when? In 2017. 2007. As an official company. We've been functioning before that, but as you see it today, two rounds of funding from, uh, from like Mark Cuban, Citibank, Cox Enterprise, that was like 2017. Wow. Big names believe in the business model. So what does that tell you? You know? Like it's it's gonna blow up. And so Ray's already seen it. He's opening up, you know, every single major market in Florida. And I'm sure like there's not a market in Florida that's a major market that you guys aren't opening, right? We're opening for mine. <laughs> we're, we're about to open statewide. Statewide. Actually. Yeah. So that's awesome. So uh, I'm excited. So guys, remember this. Uh, click the link below. You're gonna get more information. Hopefully we can collaborate on more like podcasts and stuff like that you know, deep diving in some more, cause I can sit here and ask you questions all day, but this is a good general walkthrough for you guys to see what a pad, or what a, a, an Airbnb is going into a pad split and how I'm gonna maximize the, the return on investment on this huge property and you guys can do the same. So click the link below, make sure you follow in, in the description for any other links that we have in there and some useful tips for you guys. So I'll see you guys in the next one.